On November 22nd, 1806, Captain Zebulon Montgomery Pike and his party of 15 additional men who were following the trail of a party of Spanish soldiers up the south bank of the Arkansas River crossed into what today we call Pueblo County, Colorado. The day before, they passed two sites of the Spanish party's camps and had discovered the fresh footprints of two men who were on the trail ahead of them. Somewhere near the Huerfano River, they dropped down from the prairie into the river bottom. We'll rest for a while and water the horses. Good, and I think the man could use the bite to eat. I know I could. Violent savages! I mean, look! An Indian! Violent savages! Look, an Indian! They're Pawnees, and there's about 60 of them. It looks like a war party. War party? Yes, and I'll, I'll find out what they want. Okay, you do that. We are now friends. They want us to sit and smoke peace pipe. Big Jackson! Go get some of the gifts for our friends that we brought for these kinds of situations. Get Firestone and Flint for each of them and bring a knife to each of the five leaders. Go. Where is Meek and Jackson? Hurry! Pike refers a number of times in his journals to Tetas. These Indians were probably the Comanche who were prevalent in this area. Pike and his party managed to part from the war party without any hostilities occurring and with only a few minor items pilfered by some of the Indians, but they kept on kept an alert watch on their back trail for the remainder of the day. They killed two buffalo and one deer for camping. On November the 23rd, 1806, the Pike Party arrived at the confluence of the Arkansas River and Fountain Creek. Are there any volunteers? Not me. I ain't climbing that mountain. That's huge. Ah, oh, come on, man. It's not that big. I'd like to go along. Good. Any other volunteers? Yeah, come on, guys. We'll climb that mountain. Come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How long do you think it'll take us to get to the mountain and climb it? It'll take us all day at least, maybe even longer. I don't think we should start this afternoon. We should strike out early in the morning. That sounds good to me. We'll camp here. All right, Miller and Graham, you will go to the doctor and me. But first we have to set up a defense position. Should we encounter more Indians or the Spanish? 
All right, you men cut some logs and build a three-sided enclosure on the river of the bank. All right, let's go build a fort. We'll build our camp right here. Miller and Brown start coming over here and build the camp. High Express work was made from 14 logs and was five feet high on three sides with one side open to the river. It was located on the south side of the river, somewhere near the mountain of Salt Creek. Here, 12 men of his party waited while Pike and the other three men went to investigate the mountain, later named for Pike, Pike's Peak. That's enough, so we're getting ready for bed. considerably more time than the one day plan. The group left the breastworks on November 24th and did not return until the 29th. They reported hiking 12 mi miles the first day and camping beneath a lone cedar in the prairie. On the second night out, after a hike of 22 miles, they camped at some springs in an otherwise dry steam bed at the foot of the mountains. The third night out from the breastworks was spit in a cave partway up the mountain. The morning of the 27th found the group at the top of the mountain they had been climbing and facing a big disappointment. Well men, here we are, and this certainly isn't the top of the Grand Peak. There it is, about 15 miles north. Oh, I see it. It's a big mountain. How far away is that mountain, anyways? 15 miles, but probably several thousand more feet in altitude. Oh. I'll bet the snow's a lot deeper up there, too. And a lot colder, too, I bet. It's cold enough here, but at least we're in the sunshine. Look, we've left the clouds far below us. I bet it's still snowing at that camp at the base of the mountains. I'm afraid to say that we're going to have to turn back and leave the climbing of the Grand Peak for another day. It is, at a minimum, another day's travel to gain the top of the peak. That is disappointing. Yes, I'm sorry to say that we're going to have to back down. Oh, we were so close. But the snow is too deep. We're going to have to turn back. <clears throat> but we had one mighty try. Yeah! yeah. yeah. We, did. we did have a good try. Yeah. What do you think they should call this mountain? You know what? They should call it Pike's Peak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah! Pike's Peak. We almost made it, but it's time to go back down. Aww. Aww. No worries about it. Pike's party descended the mountains, returning to the camp two nights before where they had cached much of their supplies before ascending the mountain. There they found ravens had destroyed much of their provisions. It began to snow and they found shelter for the night under a rock ledge. On the following morning they struck out down a south flowing creek and around noon shot two buffalo, which provided the first meal they had eaten in three days. They camped under a shelving rock in a valley covered with old Comanche camps. They arrived back with the group on the Arkansas River before dark on the 29th and found all well. On the morning of the 30th, although it was snowing, Pike decided to move on up the Arkansas River. The party traveled up the south bank of the river past what is now known the Nature Center and Pueblo Dam to spot probably somewhere near the mouth of Rock Creek where they camped. During the day, Pike, the doctor, and the interpreter took time to inspect a large abandoned Indian camp. The weather was so bad the following day, December 1st, that the party stayed in this camp for the day. 
On the second, they moved on crossing the river to the north bank at about where Swallows was located. Swallows, except for its cemetery, is now under the waters of the Pueblo Reservoir. They camped that evening in the vacancy of Carlisle Springs near the Fremont County line. The conversation that follows may have taken place in this camp. Sure, a lot of Indians. Did you say a thousand Indians? Yes, I sure did. When were they there? They figure it was a couple years back. And that was just one old Indian camp we saw that day. A horse pulled it, and I need someone to go look for it. I'll go. I feel really bad for those horses. All day yesterday, we were camped in. The magpies were giving those poor critter fits, picking up patched soles on their backs. I already sent several men to go butcher that buffalo we shot on the other side of the river. Well, I hope they bring back the hide as well as the meat. A lot of us need to rely on the soles of our boots. A lot of men got their feet frozen this morning during the river crossing. I was afraid that someone would get knocked down by flowing ice. We've been lucky so far. We haven't had to kill anybody. We've shot enough game. We've had enough to eat and shot enough game, deer or buffalo. I'll be a lot happier when the snow quits. I sure hope we don't have to do any more river crossings. Me too. I don't want to get my feet wet. This has been a Chibo Cheaper Productions performed by Pleasant View 7th grade history class. This play is called Zebulon Pike in Pueblo County. This play was written by Mr. P.O. Abbott of Pueblo, Colorado.